Boy, good answer. You know, uh, you mentioned, uh, it was mentioned in the video as well, that the Big Bang Theory doesn't work. And, you know, we, when we talk that way as believers, obviously we understand that, that God is the author of all creation. But that's a, that, that, that sounds like an insane concept to an unbeliever. But, but in about a minute or two, Jason, it'd be great if you could explain to us why that is. Why doesn't the Big Bang work? Yeah, well, it, first of all, it is going to sound crazy. A lot of things in Scripture sound crazy to the unbeliever. Right. Uh, the unbeliever's mind needs to be regenerated by the Holy Ghost so you can properly reason about these sorts of things. But that's not a reason to uh, dance around the issue. I'm very confident that God's Word is true, and if the unbeliever has a problem with God, then you can take it up with him. Right. Uh, regarding the, the issue of the Big Bang, though, it's not really a good scientific model. People call it, you know, they say, well, that's the scientific view. It really isn't, because science is supposed to make correct, specific predictions about uh, future events. I can predict the positions of the planets well in advance, because Newtonian physics, that's good, solid physics. That makes sense. The Big Bang doesn't make correct, specific predictions about future events. It really hasn't. The only thing I can think of is the cosmic microwave background, which is not a terribly specific prediction, right. and it's, it's not, not the right kind of background anyway. Uh, but there are certain things that the Big Bang has predicted that we don't observe in the universe. For example, monopoles. Uh, you, you probably have a magnet like the kind you stick on your refrigerator, and they tend to have two right. poles, a North Pole and a South Pole. Yeah. All magnets have those. There are theoretical particles called monopoles that only have a North Pole or a South Pole, and these are supposed to have been produced in the Big Bang, and guess how many we've found in the universe? Not one. <laughs> and so that's just one of many things that the Big Bang predicted that oh, has wow. uh, failed. And so it's really not a good scientific model. Yeah, and yet, again, it's postulated as fact time and again. The well, we have physicist who uh, discovered the Big Bang, I'm moving from evolution now, was actually a Catholic priest in holy orders and a professor at the University of Louvain. And after his quarrel with Einstein about general relativity and his hypothesis of the Big Bang, he went to the Pope and he said, look, this is how I think everything began. In fact, I think it's a sure thing. And it's, it's very important. And the Pope said, well, if you're right, I can have it taught as dogma in the schools, if you like, so everybody has to believe it. Now, you see again the difference of method and approach. That wouldn't have been a gain for the theory of relativity or for the study of physics, to have it preached as revealed truth. We still don't know a great deal about what happened in the first instance of our cosmos. We still don't know quite how the, how the quantum works. We know it does, we don't quite know why. Um, and therefore, I'm going to argue in the time I have that the late, great Stephen Jay Gould, uh, a, a non-believer, was wrong when he said that religion and science can be made compatible. Uh, I'm very glad that there's a counter up there. I wish you could keep your eye on it as well. Um, every second, every single second, a sun, a star, like our own, the equivalent of our own, blows up and goes out. That happens every second, okay? If I keep to time, See if you can imagine this. Our brains aren't really constructed to imagine it very well. If I keep to my time, 540 great stars and suns will have vanished from the cosmos. Um, it's a sobering thought. We're fortunate in being around to observe the continuing effects of the Big Bang and the mass destruction that it's unleashed. Um, in future generations, if there are enough of them, won't be able to observe it so well. Why is that? Because as the Hubble telescope has shown us, the, name, the man for whom the telescope was named, Edwin Hubble, was slightly wrong. He knew the Big Bang was still going on. He knew the universe was still expanding. But he thought the universe rate of expansion would start to slow. What's been discovered by studying the red light shift is to the contrary. It's blowing apart much faster than we thought, and with huge, massive swathes of actual current and potential and future uh, destruction. Soon. Two galaxies, you can already see it in the night sky. You can see the future in the sky already, not as a vision, not as a revelation, not as an omen or a portent. You can see the Andromeda galaxy coming towards you. The collision between our galaxy and Andromeda is a certainty. It's inscribed in all the laws of physics. We know it's coming. It'll destroy some stars, but it'll probably succeed in making an amalgamation. It may even become the only remaining uh, galaxy. See if you think that religion is any help to you in considering that very real and important fact.